So you've been here. You've been here the last couple of days. You were a speaker. You spoke in a yep. panel. What was the panel on? Uh, it was the future of podcast distribution and some content strategy ideas, that so kind of stuff. What is the future? Of Where do you see it going? Uh, I think it's uh, it's kind of going through a a stage of maturation, and I think we're kind of moving into a new phase. Um, you know, more and more podcasts are going to be consumed in the car. They're going to be consumed mobile. I think video, to a certain extent, is going to be a little bit um, less popular in the podcast area. I mean, if you look at what's going on with it right now, most of the podcasts and most of the consumption right now is on audio. Sure. And I, and I think it's going to continue to grow and and be be a bigger bigger thing over time. Do you think more of the uh, the average consumer is finding out what a podcast is how that that's been one thing because it, it's it's a very niche thing you know the podcasting world is not that big uh especially with people that are that have been doing this for a while and it's still very geeky you know you got to kind of know how to get to it yeah that that that's been an uphill battle do you, do you feel that more of the mainstream user uh with things like you know iphone and and windows phone making it so accessible to find a podcast do you think that's going to slowly transition it well, I think it's still rather big. I mean, I think that the research that just came out um, showed that about 44 million people in the U.S. just just in the U.S. have listened to a podcast. Yeah. So it's it's not an insignificant number. I mean, I would say that the the research that I've I've heard says that once you reach that 20 million threshold, that you're considered to be kind of a a, a mainstream media um, I, type I've of always... thing. So. I mean, not mainstream from the pure definition of what we normally consider, but once you reach that kind of 20 million threshold, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. You no, know, you're and, right. And 44 million. But it still uh, feels is, like it still feels like you. Big. It, it still feels like you know to kind of access a podcast, you have to be looking for it. You have to know what it yeah, is. Yeah, you do. I I totally agree. I mean, I think that the whole discovery of podcasts uh, needs to get better. You know, there needs to be better playlist controls. There needs to be better ways to to get access to the content, and I think that that's going to come. I think it's going to happen, uh, and I, th I just think as long as the content is good, right? I mean, I think you think of, you know, the kind of shows that you're doing. They're they're fun and entertaining, and I think that's what people want. I mean, people want to be entertained. They want to be educated, and if you look at really what's popular out there right now, it is those two things. People sure. want to want to learn things, and they want to be entertained. A couple of the things, uh, I, I know a lot of traditional broadcasters have made the plunge into internet broadcasting. Yep. And some of them have been successful, but many, it, it's, it's an, they have to adapt to it. it mm -hmm. It's a different way of broadcasting. Uh, you had a radio show. I did. Uh, for many years, uh, you transitioned to the internet. What are some of the uphill battles that some of these guys face? Because I think now you have to know how to do it on your own. You don't have a yeah. board op and a call screener and, and a production guy doing it for you. I think well, that's one of the I mean, few factors. But you can still have that if you want. But I think that the software tools are enabling that to be done more automated and in 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 less expensive ways. Because, I mean, a lot of those tools were have available for many years, but they were very expensive, right? So now what's happened is that the software's gotten better and the recording equipment have gotten better and thus the cost of that stuff is starting to come down so the the ability for people to it's uh, a lot more inexpensive to, yeah exactly to to do this more like a broadcast radio professional i think is easier now now the the broadcast guys uh they they are oftentimes more focused on local markets right trying to reach a, sure. a, a city right versus podcasters are usually global or national Right, so I think that's that's where the the local broadcasters really need to think more national, right? So there, some content's going to be local, some content's going to be national, and you need to open your mind to yeah. How do you that opportunity, both? right? Sure, yeah. it, it's it's a balance of it. Uh, as far as distribution goes, how has that changed over the last couple of years? Because it, it, it's far more accessible to put your podcast out there yeah. and get your podcast out there. Um, where what do you see? the next five years taking us um i think it's going to be more in the car i think mobile is going to be more important i i really feel that the kind of cloud based on demand i i think is really that can be a confusing topic sometimes i mean I, I mean i but this ability to just click play versus subscribe and download i i think is a very powerful thing sure. i think it gets back to what's what's your favorite shows right and then being able to quickly get access to them on any device that you would want to get access to them on 
easily rather and simply. than subscribing and downloading. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's been a number. I think many people like the subscriber thing because it's a numbers game up until now. But yeah. I think that's going to slowly change. You're absolutely right. Uh, with with 4G becoming uh, widely spread out across the country, and, and companies like Ford allowing you to pop in a 4G, you know, yep. uh, adapter, USB adapter into your car, uh, is really going to change the way that we consume content. Yeah. On the go. Uh, my, one of the things that I'm surprised at my mobile viewership and listenership is not that high. Everybody's still downloading the show. Yeah. And I'm amazed by yeah. that because it, it, I want it to be portable. I want to walk around with it, and people just are still sitting there. So well, I think that is something that's yeah. I mean, there. still today, most of the platforms are download s- subscription-based yeah. platforms, and we still haven't seen that that full deployment of on-demand uh, streaming of this content. Yeah, and I think that's that's what it's going to take, and it's going to take a few years. I mean. I, I mean, it's been what seven years or so the podcast has been around. Yeah, about that. Yeah, and and I still think that it's very early. It's it's the wild west. I, I always yeah. say that we're this is the wild west, and it's so spread out, and and we're just all piecing it together as we're going along. Yeah. Regardless if you're or if yeah. you're a traditional broadcaster yeah. with a multi million dollar facility, or or if you're doing it out of your garage, yeah, it, we're still all piecing this together. We are, we are, uh, and it's still, and that's what's exciting about it. You know, you may know something that I had no idea about, it, and, and we're just spreading the information, yeah. and that's what's really changing the entire uh, way that we broadcast. Yeah, I mean, you think about how long broadcast radio has been around. Um, that's how long it probably can, is going to take this this particular industry to uh, to uh, actually um, you know mature, mature and yeah. get, get to a point where where th- all these processes are, are are smooth and simple Rob you know? thank you so much man I really appreciate it I had a lot of fun talking to you finally we got to meet after uh, a year yeah, of chatting yeah. online uh, Rob Greenlee everybody what's your website where can people get more information uh, well actually that can be reached at robgreenlee.com and that's uh, two e's robgreenlee.com and then I can also be found on Twitter at, you're on uh, Twitter you're always tweeting what yeah exactly always tweeting always uh, yep. Rob Green- Greenlee everybody